Hi friends, welcome back to The Love Said. My name is Jessica and in today's video I'm doing a book review in 10 minutes or less of Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. Welcome to The Love Said. <clears throat> Keeper of the Lost Cities is written by Shannon Messenger. It was published by Aladdin in 2012. It's 488 pages in length. I read the hardcover version that I checked out from my local library. I read this as part of the Middle Grade Monthly Book Club. This was their January 2021 book club selection. Shannon Messenger graduated from the USC School of Cinematic Arts. She eventually learned that she liked watching movies much better than making them. So then she turned to her real passion, which was writing stories for children. Her books have been featured on multiple state reading lists, published in numerous countries, and translated into many different languages. She lives in Southern California with an embarrassing number of cats. Let me read you the book blurb. 12-year-old Sophie has a secret. She's a telepath, someone who hears the thoughts of everyone around her. It's a talent she's never known how to explain. Everything changes the day she meets Fitz, a mysterious boy who appears out of nowhere and also reads minds. She discovers there's somewhere she does belong and that staying with her family will put her in grave danger. In the blink of an eye, Sophie is forced to leave behind everything and start a new life in a place that is vastly different from anything she has ever known. Sophie has new rules to learn and new skills to master, and not everyone is thrilled that she has come home. There are secrets buried deep in Sophie's memory, secrets about who she really is and why she was hidden among humans that other people desperately want or would even kill for. In this page-turning debut, Shannon Messenger creates a riveting story where one girl must figure out why she is the key to her brand new world before the wrong person finds the answer first. One thing that I do want to mention about this book is that Shannon Messenger wrote this book when she was like 17 years old, which is incredible. <laughs> I could never have done this at 17 years old. So that is super fantastic. Um, as the summary describes, Sophie is a telepath and she's whisked away into this new land and finds out that she, she's actually a fairy. So she lives in a fairyland. She does have to leave her human family and live permanent, permanently in this land. And it's basically about her experiencing this new world and starting up school at this new school where she's learning to harness all of her fey powers. Um... So there are some pretty strong themes in this of found family. Those were the biggest overarching themes because Sophie does have to leave her human family that she was born to and finds a new family in a lot of different ways in her friend group in um, Fitz's family who Fitz is the one who initially like met her and pulled her back into this fairy world um, and in her adoptive uh, family that she lives with here in this new land. So, um, I will mention too that I am doing this review after having watched the live show for Middle Grade Monthly, um, where we talked about the book in pretty good detail. And I'll leave a link to that live show down below. So some of these, um are thoughts that I have developed post that live show and some of them are thoughts that I initially had after reading it before viewing the, the live show. So in terms of characters, there's not a whole lot of depth with the characters. They're kind of flimsy. I would have liked to have seen more character development in this book. This is a long middle grade. It's almost 500 pages long which is pretty long for a middle grade and in those 500 pages I feel like a lot of the characters are still quite surface level and I wanted to see more of the emotions that Sophie goes through having to leave her family. I mean that is a horrifying thing for a 12 year old. That's so super painful and it really doesn't delve deep into that and um so I think the character development is probably one of the weakest um the weakest aspects of this book 
and um, the characters were pretty surface level. This is a series, so perhaps as the series goes on, we get to know more about the characters because this did very much read like a book setting up a series. So um, the possibility is there that we will get to know more about the characters as the books go along. The atmosphere of these fairy cities, um, is she a fairy? No, she's an elf. Okay, so I got that totally wrong. Delete everything you just heard. Um, it's not a fairyland. It, she's an elf. So she's in an elf world. <laughs> I got my mythos confused. All right, so the elf worlds where she lives were not places that I would necessarily want to live or have fun living in. Um, there was not a whole lot of space in these worlds for a person to have any privacy. So some of the skills that the elves have are that they can like read your emotions, they can read your thoughts, and like that feels very invasive to me. And then the buildings within these worlds as well are made of like crystal. And in my mind, when I'm thinking crystal, I'm thinking like you can see through the walls, <laughs> right? Like, cause crystal is clear. And that just, it just bothered me. Like they're, everything is transparent in so many different ways. Like you don't have a lot of opportunity to have private spaces within this atmosphere and within this world. And it just, I didn't like it. Like it didn't feel cozy. It didn't feel comfortable. It didn't feel um, the way that I wanted it to feel. So I didn't love that. Uh, the writing has a few issues in there where she repeats certain actions without clear purpose or depth. So Sophie pulls out eyelashes repeatedly and that could potentially be a comment on trichotillomania, which is a disorder where people pull out their hair and do like skin picking and stuff. But it doesn't really go into depth on that. It doesn't say why she's pulling out her eyelashes. It doesn't talk about the anxiety that led up to her pulling out her eyelashes or what kind of experience pulling out an eyelash does for her emotionally. So it just like, again, very surface level kinds of stuff. Um, with little things like that. So like pulling out an eyelash, letting out a breath or holding a breath happens multiple times um, within the book. So little writing issues like that were present where there are these just actions that didn't have clear purpose or depth. And then um, the plot is very Harry Potter a very boy wizard. She's the chosen one. They come find her in the human world, tell her she's an elf, whisk her away to the magical world. Um, even the ending with the bad guy. So like the, the end comes, it comes across as see, these bad guys are still out there. They do still exist. So like she's convincing this elf world and all the adults in it that the bad guy's still there just like Harry Potter convinces everyone that Voldemort is still there. Very Harry Potter in terms of the plot structure. And some of the plot was also a little bit muddy, um, particularly around the magic systems and how those magic systems work. Some of it was pretty convenient. Like, we are in Paris now, and oh, ta-da, I can magically get this ATM to give me $50. Um, without like the logic or the explanation behind, okay, how? <laughs> how did you do that? When did you learn how to do that? Like, that was convenient. So there were some of those issues happening um, within the book. And, uh, you know, despite all of those things that were going on that um, could potentially pull you out of the story and frustrate you as a reader. I did have fun reading this book. It made me feel like a kid again in a lot of ways. Um, I liked getting sort of lost as much as I could in the world and seeing um, just a young kid have adventures. Like, I, th I think I liked it just because, like, I like that middle grade trope. I like that trope of, like, oh, now we're in a new world and we're experiencing these things and we're learning new things about ourselves. And 
So even despite its flaws, I did still end up enjoying the reading experience. I don't know if I enjoyed it enough to continue with the series, but I also like don't regret reading it, which is usually a good sign. <laughs> so I did, um, um, I also noticed and kept thinking that like if I was a 12 year old girl, I would eat this book right up. Like I wouldn't even notice some of those issues that came up like with character development or the magic systems or things like that. Like I wouldn't even notice those things. I wouldn't care about those things if I was a 12 year old girl reading this book. Um, I would thoroughly enjoy it. So I think in terms of the target audience, like this is spot on. Um, and you know, I can see why a lot of kids really, really love um, this book. So I did give it a rating of three stars out of five. Um, in terms of content warning, kidnapping comes up a couple of times in this book and then death of children is mentioned. It doesn't actually happen on page, but it is mentioned. So those would be the content warnings I'd suggest. And that'll do it for this review. So if you read this and if you were part of Middle Grade Monthly and attended the live show, um, feel free to comment down below and share your thoughts and your experiences with reading this book. And until next time, make sure to continue to read good books, drink good coffee, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.